Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today we are going to continue on with what I have deemed my peppermint bustle project that you can see in the background there. And we are going to continue where we left off last week with the trimming of the underskirt. So if you haven't seen last week's vlog, I will link that up above and also down below so that you can easily see that. But let's go ahead and continue on with today. So the first thing that I'm going to be working on today is making the bias trim that goes around the skirt. And that is because I need to know how much fabric that's going to take up so that I know how much more fabric to pick up at Joann's so that I have enough for the bodice because I don't think I currently do. <laughs> Whoops. So I'm making the bias trim out of this piece that was left over from, I believe, my cutting of the overskirt, whether that was the front or the back, I'm not really positive, but it was left over from that. And I thought that I had two pieces that were quite biasy that I could like cut strips from, which like I could, but it turns out that they're on a very different bias and the stripes don't look the same at all because I really liked this bias strip look where you can see just how diagonal those stripes are. I think that that's just super fun looking in comparison with the vertical stripes and the horizontal stripes. This makes a really nice contrast. So I'm going to be making strips of this. The strips are going to need to be one and five eighths inches wide finished, which means that I do have to allow enough to fold under as well. So I think I'm going to be cutting these at about two and three eighths inches, just because I like a three eighth inch fold, whether that's like on a hem or anything, three eighths inches for me is just really, really easy to fold. So I'm going to be cutting these strips at two and three eighths inches. And I think I need a total of about like 200 40 inches or something like that of these strips. So I have to cut a lot of them. So I'm going to be using my rotary cutter and my cutting mat and my clear plastic rulers in order to cut these strips. So I've cut out a whole bunch of these strips now, although to be honest, I don't really think it's enough, but it was kind of enough of like the width of this yardage. And now I am seaming them together on the ends. So the interesting thing about doing this with stripes is matching up the stripes. And the good thing is that because I'm cutting these all out of a triangular piece, there's one side that looks like this and one side that looks like this. So I'm matching them up together because I can't put the opposite side with the opposite side or the stripes will all of a sudden have an interruption. And specifically as I'm sewing this up, I'm making sure that my seam line is going to be right down the middle of this red stripe over here because that will present me with two halves of one red stripe making it still look uniform. And then over here, I'm just making sure that the stripes match up as they meet down here and then that'll be sewn like about a mm, quarter inch or so away from the edge. So I've got a whole bunch of that to do and then I'll be able to press those open and hopefully all of my stripes will match up and hopefully it will be enough. Though again, I have a feeling I'll have to cut more, but I'm going to take my current amount of these and once I seam them all together, I'm going to press all of their edges in so that they're one and five eighths inches wide. And then I'm going to look at attaching everything to the skirt. And really, I mean, when I say attaching everything, I, that means that I will be attaching the pleats parts first and I'll be laying those at the bottom of the skirt to see where they need to hit at the top but they'll just be sewn down flat top stitch, the wrong side of these to the right side of the skirt. And then this bit will go over that. And this will, I'm trying to decide on how exactly I'll be sewing this down because the lower edge here will be hidden by my braided trim, this braided trim here, but the upper edge will be visible. So I kind of feel like I'm going to have to sew it down with right sides together and then flip it down and make sure that the bottom is the right place. So I'll have to measure on the skirt how that goes, but I'll do more of that later as we get there. All of these strips are now pressed into place and I did a pretty darn good job with those seams too. You can hardly see them. So that is nice. And now all of the trim is ready to be put onto the skirt. So to start adding the trims on, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to line up the hem here with the bottom of the ruffles. If anything, I want the ruffles to be like an eighth of an inch or so past the bottom of the skirt, though not that much because I hemmed the skirt to basically be exactly where I wanted it. So 
it's going to be probably about like there ish where it hangs over and this is going to be just top stitched all the way around so I'm gonna position it all into place pin it in place and then just stitch probably about where the line of stitching is that's the basting and then I can put the bias strip on top of that but I'm already really liking this play of direction and once we add the bias strip in I think it's just gonna get even more fun so I want to talk about how I work in the ends where they meet like this because I just wind up making enough trim so that it can go at least all the way around not so that it's like a specific measurement because it's so easy to get that wrong that it just seems safer to go extra. So that means that I have to incorporate the two ends together. And in this case, I actually really lucked out because this pleat here, this fold is sitting exactly where it should be to keep like the size of the pleats correct when it lands on top of this pleat. So that's really awesome. This, however, would have benefited from like, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or quarter, probably quarter of an inch more going that way before I had started this pleat. And that was just my fault for not thinking through when I started doing the pleats. But because basically right now it's meeting up where it should, but with no seam allowance. And you want to ideally have the pleat depth plus seam allowance. So right now I just have pleat depth, no seam allowance. But that's okay, we can cheat it. This is kind of the side back of the skirt. I made sure that it wasn't meeting in the front of the skirt. And so basically what's going to happen here is here is this pleat here. I am going to undo the stitching here and fold this back, this part here, back that way so that this becomes the seam allowance where it matches up. Then I'm going to serge that edge so that it's clean and it you know doesn't unravel or anything. And then I am going to stitch the two bits of the pleat together right sides together so I actually made a little bit of mistake here and I started all the way to here I need to unpick a little bit of this I want to unpick it until here for where it's like sewn to the skirt this one I left where there was extra room because you want to be able to get in there and get those right sides together so that is what I'm going to do now I'm going to fix that and put them together and I will show you what it looks like when it is done so this is what it looks like when it's done. You can barely even tell which pleat it is other than the fact that there's a little bit that isn't surged here, but this is gonna be covered up, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, it's right in there. I did actually wind up repressing the fold here because it wasn't quite even between the two. It was really, really close, but it wasn't quite there. So I did repress the fold, but yeah, the seam allowance is right there. So on the back, that is what it looks like and now it's hiding quite nicely and blending in and that's very very easy to do i do this with ruffles and pleats really any sort of skirt trim where it's just easier to make a whole lot of it and then figure out how much excess you have now if these pleats did not at all line up then i would probably have to undo maybe like three to five pleats on either side just to like gradually get them the right size so that they would still look even because again all of these pleats are eyeballed so they may all be different sizes but they look pretty darn close and I mean unless someone is up there with a ruler I think it's pretty darn hard to tell and I am perfectly happy having that be how I do my pleats because it's so much easier so yeah that is one row of pleats now on the skirt and that means that I'm able to start putting the bias trim on. I still haven't quite decided how I want to put this on, but I think what I'm probably going to do is kind of see where this wants to be, which is probably about there-ish over the pleats. And maybe I might try and line it up with the top of the red. So what I really need to do is determine where this crease is right here, and then kind of know where that is, open it up, and mark where the fold goes to on the inside because then if I mark that all the way around I can just line up the raw edge with the fold and this will be the seam will be in the proper place the seam on the fold will be in the proper place where it can just fold over and hit the right amount all the way around the skirt and the stitching will be encased inside so that'll be great and then this one I can just top stitch this because the trim is going on top of it so it does not matter but I do want to hide that top seam that'll be right in the fold. The trim is sewn down on this side and I'm in the process of pinning it down on this side. Now, unfortunately, there are some things where you just cannot match them up. <laughs> this is where the two ends met and it just didn't work out that the math 
made them match up at a line. That's kind of just what happens when it's a certain size long. So, oh well, but it's a pretty small thing and it's actually kind of nicely doing completely off. So if it's not a match, at least it's like not like it's trying to be a match. So that's pretty fine. And I'm going around now and pinning them all down and then I'm going to top stitch right along the edge of this and then the braid will be put down over that seam gap. And the trim is done down on here on the bottom tier. So I have the braid and the zigzags and a cat and <laughs> the pleated trim. So I'm super happy with how that looks. Now I just need to repeat the whole process there goes my cat. Does anyone else's cat just like prefer to live under the tent that is a skirt? Odora. <laughs> There's some uh, genuine cat content for you all. So yeah, I just need to repeat the whole process again with the next tier up, which will be like right here. So for the second tier of ruffles, I want the gap between the bottom of the second row or the top row and the bias strip to be one and a half inches. And then the ruffle itself is five inches. So that means I need to measure up six and a half inches, draw a line up here with a friction pen, and that will be what the top of the ruffle butts up against. Once I put that ruffle on, then I will do the same thing on the bottom where I drew the line for here and set that bias strip up on there. So I probably won't check in with you until this whole second ruffle is done, unless something dramatic and interesting happens. So remember how I thought that I wasn't going to have enough of this bias trim for these two tiers of pleats? Yeah, um, I think I had enough. <laughs> I've already done the entire second tier here and I had that much extra so I have no idea what I was thinking thinking that I wouldn't have enough but yeah ridiculously like too much so that's good it's again not matching here at the join but that's okay it's close but meh, whatever okay so I'm going to press all of this down and put this over the pleats and stitch it down on this side all right, so the skirt trim for the underskirt is now complete. All of the braid is on, the pleats, the bias trim, all of that is done, and I'm turning my attention to the overskirt. So this is what I mocked up for the overskirt trim. I actually did this using the leftover trim from the upper part of the underskirt, and then this is a vintage ribbon, like kind of a embroidered-ish, it's not embroidered, it's woven, I guess, ribbon that I have had in my stash for ages. And it just seemed like the perfect opportunity to use this. I believe that if I make the ribbon go to where these skirts meet front and back, as opposed to continuing up the join of the skirt, then I should have enough ribbon to do this pleat setup. So what I'm doing is these are just gonna be shortened pleats here. This one is obviously the long one, but I'm cutting new pleats. I'm gonna have to hem them because again, I don't have any more selvage. And I am making a whole ton of new pleats to go all the way around the bottom of the overskirt. And then I've got that to trim the ribbon that I'm going to sew down on top of that. I haven't decided exactly how I'm sewing down the ribbon yet. I really hope it's gonna be by machine, but the pleats are going to go behind this hem part of the skirt, which means I can do the hem by machine. So that is pretty awesome. And tonight I am going to be working on all of those pleats forever. So a few notes on the overskirt trimming here before I sew it all on and forget to tell you. For one thing, I did not at all cut out enough of the pleats. Initially, those two strips didn't cut it. Like literally, I think I had gotten to about two thirds of what I needed. It was pretty way off. So I did cut out another full row and then like another partial row of the pleats, but they are all now pleated up all nicely and I am attaching them to the rest of the overskirt. So what I'm doing here, what I've decided is kind of what I have to do is I am stitching right on the very barest edge of the overskirt, I'm stitching the pleats down to that because I realized that the edge of my overskirt is a white stripe, not a red stripe. And then there's like a red stripe here that's the first full stripe and I've just got a tiny bit of the white. So basically I'm overlapping this just a tiny bit. You can kind of see where it is underneath the foot here. It's going like that 
to get the overlap and I'm stitching right right on the edge of that. Then over the top of that on the red stripe area I'm going to be applying the vintage red ribbon trim. That way it takes the place of the red stripe. Now of course what this does mean that you might be able to see even through the fabric is that I'm not actually getting like the full hem of the overskirt here. So for the back panel, I am going to have to go back and stitch this part by hand. This is all what I'm doing for the back panel. For the front panel, it's a lot easier because the stripes are running diagonally at the time. And so I don't have to worry about like matching up, you know, red, white, red. So it can overlap more like that or farther and then the red ribbon can just kind of go across like this kind of like on the underskirts so that's where i'm at and i am going to keep stitching along i'm about halfway through the back of the overskirt at this point and then have all of the front to do and then have all of the ribbon trim to do and then have the hemming the hand hemming of this that i'm going to do last because i figured i can I think the front side I am going to actually just hem it by machine first, then do all the trims. So better get back to work. So I thought by my estimation that I was going to wind up with like five extra inches of this trim, which, you know, still wouldn't be enough to do anything with, but at least would be like a little bit of something, I guess. But it turns out that I wound up with like Mm, I think that might be like two and a half inches left. So that was close. Because this is vintage trim and I would rather not cut it if I don't have to. And because I don't have enough to do like anything else with, I am actually just gonna stitch this over itself. And that way there are a couple places where the trim is, has actually like tiny little tears in it that are around the back of the skirt. And they're very small, like, you know, I don't think they'll turn into anything, but just in case they do, I guess that way I can like untuck a little bit and patch it in the future if I need to. But yeah, whew, that was close. But it's really, really pretty. And I love the fact that it's like a vintage trim and I've had it in the stash for so long. So I'm glad I'm finally using it because it's so pretty. So the trim is now basically on the skirt. I did notice that this one part over here right at this join was not hanging correctly. So I had to undo a little bit here and then repin the side going up and I still have to redo this last bit on. Honestly, I'm kind of wondering if it's just gonna be easier to do by hand than try to put it back under the machine. So I might do that, particularly because all of this bit also has to be done by hand. So that is basically all I have left to do on the skirt is the side overlaps have to be sewn by hand, both sides, and there's like a little kind of flap inside from the underskirt that has to be stitched down or maybe cut off or I don't know something because right now it's literally just like floating inside see that little flap there this guy right here so that's just like excess from the overlap and yeah I really don't need it in there so I might just kind of cut that off and hem it and then I do also have to do the hemming of the inside of this ruffle because as you can see here it doesn't actually like catch from the machine stitching so that is what I have to hand sew but other than the hand sewing everything else on the overskirt and both underskirts are done and in fact I already have the closures on the skirts and everything so it is just the side bits and then the hem and then that is all done oh and I think I'm actually going to like stitch a tuck in the ruffle at the join too because it wants to kind of flip up unless I do that sort of thing on both sides so probably just going to stitch it like that but yeah not too bad today is well by this point it's Friday morning at like two in the morning but I am going to spend some of my Friday doing all of this hand sewing bit and that's probably gonna be it for this vlog but I will show you what it looks like once it's actually sewn and you know not just all pinned in place so I will come back to you sometime tomorrow good night I've stitched up the outside part of the seam where the two meet, which I will show you in a bit, but now I am trying to figure out what to do with this excess flappy bit that is the inside bit that I was talking about earlier where it overlaps. 
And I think I'm just going to cut, I drew a line in here that kind of goes to like where they meet and then up here at the waistband. And I think I'm just going to cut that and fold it back and do like a little bit of a hem. I debated about just like surging it off and leaving it, but I don't know, maybe doing the hem would be slightly better because it's already folded up here into the waistband. And so I just feel like it'd be weird to not the, you know, then just chop it off there and then just surge it. So yeah, I'm just going to curve that and angle it down into here with a fold. So I'm going to cut that out and give that a try. So I decided to, after pressing to actually just do this by machine because like there's no point in doing it by hand. It's inside the skirt. So well, that is now done. I wanted to show you the exterior where it meets. So on one side, this is the side where the waistband is continuous, not the opening. I just whipped it. And because this side has like the stripes and everything and there wasn't just sort of a continuous color, including all the way down to the pleats, that I figured was kind of the best bet because yes, it will show a little bit on the edges of the red, but it's not too conspicuous and on the white it blends in entirely. So that's what I did on this side and then here I've prick stitched the little pleats together in that join so that it'll make that shape and not stick out really weirdly. But then on the other side, because it is just a white vertical stripe here, I decided to prick stitch it actually all of the way up. So you really can't see any stitches at all, which is pretty nice. And then of course the opening is up here. So I didn't have to worry about going across the stripes or anything because this part is the opening for the waistband. So that is all done. The only thing left to do on here now is to do the hem on the back of the underskirt. So I'm gonna do that by hand now and make sure that edge is all nice and secured and then this will be completely done. Okay, slight change of plans. I started doing this hem and as you can see, it's like super visible even though I am only taking like a thread per stitch. And so I think I'm just going to like leave it up to chance because the hem, I mean like, it's in there, it's just not actually secured. It's just folded, but if it unfolds, I mean, whatever, it's not a big deal. It's not like it's at the bottom. It's not like it's gonna show, so no big deal. So I'm actually going to undo what I just did. Luckily, I didn't do that much of it, like less than a foot, and uh, get those little pricks out of the fabric there because I just do not like the way they look and just leave it a chance, which means that once I undo it, the skirt is done. So there we go. Ignore the uh, sinking dress form because that's really helpful. But the skirt is done. I am loving the way all of the pleats look and everything. I think all of that mixture of stripes is just crazy and I'm here for it. And same with up here. I really love the way that the vintage trim is, you know, matching so well with everything. I think it's just pretty perfect. And the drape of the back is so much fun. I mean, like, oh, look at that. It's almost like some sort of like a magic eye or something. And yeah, loving this. So very excited to start working on the bodice for next week. All right, well, since it is Saturday and the skirt is finished, that is going to be it for me for this week's vlog. So do make sure that you check back next week as I move on to the bodice. If you like this video though, please make sure to click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please be sure and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you would like to support me and all that I do on this channel, I do have a link to both my Patreon or my Ko-fi account down below. Once again, thank you so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!